desert isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, Emmy paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall, or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands, this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. Okay, so that's the end of my rest day for today in Stratford-upon-Avon. I'm now back in Chiffin Camden, and I'm about to start the Heart of England way, and I've got a monster pack now because I've just resupplied. I've got loads and loads of food. So now I've got another 100 miles until the end of this leg. So we're going to say goodbye now. Bye! Bye. By this point in my journey, I had walked the distance that it would take me to get back to my home from Land's End to Milton Keynes. This would also be the last time that I would see my family until the end of my walk. I think this walk has just got a little bit more scarier now that I've uh, spent the day with my mum and my best friend and my nan. And uh, it's kind of like become a bit of a reality that I'm going to be going quite a far away from home now. Like... Uh, like, there's no one now that I really know between here and John O'Groats, you know. Well, nearly died then. Um, so I'm just, just, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of hit me a bit now. <laughs> so that's, it's all good. But the next, uh, the next half of this leg is going to be interesting. Okay, so this is my uh, first night on the Heart of England Way. I found a nice little um, farmer's field and I just saw a badger and I'm gutted because it moved just before I managed to get my camera out to show you. But yeah, so tomorrow I've got about 15 miles to walk and then we're going to really crack it. Just going to try and smash it out. So yeah. Good morning. It's uh, seven o'clock in the morning, and God, that was a rough night. I <laughs> uh, got woken up about two o'clock in the morning by a badger screaming. That badger that I saw last night, he was screaming and screaming. I had no idea what the hell to do. So I actually ended up playing some badger noises back at it and it kind of left. So I heard it like a few miles away screaming again. And now I can hear train maintenance just going on over there. And I mean, it's seven o'clock, so I should probably get up. But oh, fuck me. That was, that was definitely a rough night. It got quite cold as well. So, yeah. That's the reason May.
Okay, I have to try and crawl under here without breaking anything. I have to say these exposed farmers fields are just so hot, there's no shade at all and like because the ground is fairly light it's just reflecting it back straight into my face <laughs> so it's quite, it's quite hard All these prickles are just ruining my uh, sleeping mat Look at that giant chunk missing out of it. Fuck's sake. It's only gonna get worse. So, just a little bit of history for you. Um, I don't know if you can really see the inscription, but this was actually made in World War One. This is a Belgian soldier, and this is an inscription um, of a Belgian soldier from World War One, and it's still here now. How amazing is that? And that's just a complete hidden gem. Okay, so one thing that I've started to learn about the Heart of England Way is it's not that well signposted. It's not as good as the Cotswold. Um, it's not bad, it's not the worst I've ever been on, but it's still, I've gone wrong twice because they did a reroute, uh, which means that my map doesn't really work with it but at the same time they're sending me the wrong way sometimes. I just found a, an abandoned little house thingy like a hut or something. I'm just gonna go and explore it. I guess this must be a work being done in here as a storage area. Let's hit my bag off and have a look. I think this is just somewhere. Oh. Yeah, there's a bird. I think people are just storing stuff in here. That's a lot less exciting than I thought. I was hoping to get some water or something. Oh well. Found out that I'm actually in a broad bean field. So, uh, I'm going to take some of these. I won't take too many or not enough for anyone to ever notice. Never know. Might run out of food one day. So, after a lot of fucking about, I think I'm on the right road now. Uh, but I decided I'm just going to stay in this shade for a little bit i'm gonna to listen to the football game and uh then i've got two hours of walking ahead of me before i get to ulster it's getting quite dark now because i uh Sat and listened to the England game. England versus Colombia. What a fucking tense game that was. I'm glad it was worth the sacrifice. Jesus. My heart was pounding that whole time. But uh, I was really worried that I was sat there. At, but it was getting dark around me. I hadn't really moved. And I, uh, I'm glad that it was worth it. And at least we won. Uh, Obviously you're watching this in the future so you know who won the World Cup, but shh, don't tell me. Um, yeah, so I'm just on my way to Ulster now, via Broome. Uh, and, oh god. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's getting quite late. Well, it's not quite late, it's 10 o'clock, but it's starting to go dark, so I, 
I need to pull my thumb out a little bit and just get my ass there. I don't think I had a bad place to sleep last night. Actually, I think I, uh, I thought it was going to be really, really bad. I thought someone was going to walk past or like a uh, dog walker, which is like, it's quite obvious. This is just a, a path, but nobody's coming. It's about eight o'clock in the morning, which is quite late. And nobody's come yet. I can see that there's a car through there. But other than that, it's not too bad. But I, I, I don't know. I feel a bit tired, sort of thing. I'm really tired today. Like drained. So we'll see how that goes. I've got to still keep walking. So well, I'm definitely getting a little bit of hay fever problem again. So I need to take another antihistamine. And have some breakfast and go. Okay, I'm uh, I'm on the road again, and I didn't make it to Ulster last night, so I've got to get to Ulster first, and then I'm going to try and work out about 15 miles from there to get to there. I did wake up feeling quite rough this morning, but now I'm actually on the go again. I'm not too bad. I've had some breakfast. I don't think I should ever skip breakfast again. <laughs> um, I think that's why I felt like shit yesterday. I really did. I was, I went to bed and I just slept straight through the night, absolutely, completely and utterly gone. And I think that was because I was so tired and hungry and I should have just ate. I've just been resupplied, there's no real reason, it was just out of laziness yesterday. So... That's, uh, that's my plan of action from now on, no more skipping breakfast. Make sure I eat and drink plenty. Yeah, look at that. It's like an oasis. I'm going in. Look at this perfect little break stop. Beautiful big huge tree, loads of shade, and people have just left their shit everywhere. And it gets worse. Someone's left glass there as well. Right next to like a nice little pond and everything. I believe I got bitten by a bug last night because. That is quite a bump. That's a massive bump that is. And it's itchy and painful, so fuck knows what that is. I got myself a protein shake because <clears throat> I haven't really had very much like chicken or meat or anything like that since I started this walk. And I'm carrying a huge bag and I'm not going to recover her voice, so I thought, you know, fuck it. It's not going to kill me. And it's white chocolate, and I love white chocolate, so that's good. And I've also got chocolate raisins, because I fucking love chocolate raisins. <laughs> about overgrown paths this is probably the worst one I've seen do you see a path I don't see a path this uh, horse over here doesn't look too happy that I'm in this field and it keeps coming up to me and then running off and coming back to me I don't know what that means oh, wait. 
Go away. Listen, buddy, I don't know how to ride you. Hey, go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Oh, God. That was rather unpleasant, but it's kind of just opened up now into an actual, an actual path. So, yeah. I've just gone through a ton of a uh, path that's just really bad. Nobody's cut it or anything like that. My uh, sleeping mat is just fucking destroyed from the like thorns and stuff like that. I'm basically walking through bushes. And then I've just come to this monstrosity it's just another one and it's like you can't even open the gate it's that bad i have no idea where it's going to lead me but i can't imagine it's going to be anywhere good fuck fell over for the second time this trip right proper fall over and now look at that i can't even get through that oh i have to proper Crouch. This is what I crawled out of. I have some uh, concerns about my bag now as well. There it is. This that's coming apart a bit. And more importantly, that looks like it's starting to get a bit weak. Which isn't good because if my bag breaks. I really am fucked. I don't have any money to buy a new one. And I don't know how to fix it either. So I'm really going to have to try and take it easy with this bag for a bit. I mean, it's a tough bag. That's why I got it. But it has been going every single day for a long time now. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> good news is I've sort of got a plan to fix my bag tomorrow. Uh, I found out that Kingswood, the place that I was planning to camp tonight, uh, has a train station and it takes, takes you straight into a place that's pretty much Birmingham in Solly Hill that has uh, a Timpsons. So I might be able to go and get my bag fixed there. Uh, also, I'm on a canal. So I should easily be able to find somewhere to camp tonight. Um, the only downside is my phone's about to die any second now. And I'm using the very last few few seconds of it to film this, so that's fine. <clears throat> that's fine because it's just two miles straight line to get to where I'm going to be going tonight. So hopefully it'll work out. I have to be really quick, but I've basically decided I'm going to try and camp here tonight, which is right next to a lock. But there is a house over there. I haven't knocked on their door to see if I'm allowed to just camp here, but to be honest with you, I'm just going to take the risk because I'm tired. <laughs> so I've got to be up early anyway, so whatever. And that's it. I've got to charge my phone now. The next morning, I was approached by a couple who decided to offer me a lift into Sully Hill to help me out to fix my bag. <laughs> I'm doing it for the MS Society. My crisis is averted. I've fixed my, well, I didn't fix my bag. Andy here fixed my bag. Saved the day for me. What a legend. Thank good you man. so no, much, you're doing, a good, you're doing a good thing, mate. Thank so you. Good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank no you. worries, mate. Living the dream. <laughs> Along with Andy's help, Sally and Steve helped me find a path that would take me up north via the canal system. 
My plan had now changed and I was ditching the heart of England way. So as you know from uh, earlier, I was camping down there on the canal and these two lovely people came and said hello to me and they gave me a lift all the way down to Sully Hill so I could get my bag fixed. It basically saved the day for me, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh -huh. well, we were going there. We were, yeah, we so were going to do our shopping We were going to the same place with the so yeah. you, you stopped and talked to a stranger and then just helped yeah. me out, you know, and now I'm having tea with them. And they're just, they've given me some routes so I might be taking the canal route now to, uh, to a leak so yeah so my plans are completely changed so there you go that's adventure for you so thank you so much no worries, well, pleasure.